Hi, look what came in the mail today. A customer sent these over from Oahu for restringing. Little does he know, in this video, I'll be custom matching his rackets and hopefully he'll see the difference but not feel the difference. All right, let's go inside. So before we get started, I did want to mention in my uh, opening comments about the racket, uh, about the customer uh, seeing the difference and not feeling the difference. Uh, I meant that hopefully in a good way because um, it's obvious that I'm going to add lead tape so he'll see it there. But um, I'm hoping that um, with that additional lead, it'll make him not feel the difference because they'll be specked out more similarly. So before I decided to do this video, I did want to make sure I checked the two rackets out to see if it would be a good candidate for this. And so this is uh, the racket that's lighter. It's uh, two grams lighter than the other one. And uh, what really stood out though was a swing weight. It's uh, nine units lower. Uh, I think the average recreational player, or may maybe not the recreational player, but the more uh, serious players could probably tell when it's about 10 units of swing weight difference so i thought that you know that would be um uh, that would be noticeable but it'd be interesting to see if you actually did notice a difference uh, and then when you get down to about five units then uh might not be noticeable for most players but i'm gonna go ahead and make this one match the other one so uh, on this uh other racket here is um the heavier one uh i got um We'll do the specs as um, I'm describing it, but it came in at 348 grams. And when I weighed this other, this second racket, this lighter one, uh, it's right at 346. So there's the two grams right there. The uh, swing weight on this one is at 307. And this is where the, the difference was right here is the swing weight. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo it. And so that this one was 307, and this one's coming out at uh, 298. So there's that nine units right there. Um, I even did the stiffness, not that I could change that, but if you've never seen an RDC uh, do the uh, stiffness test, I'll just go ahead and show it to you. But basically, it's just gonna bend the frame a little bit. So um, once this uh, tulip, that's what it's called, uh, touches the frame, you're gonna see it start bending right here. And it's taking a measurement of stiffness when it's uh, bending it down like that. Um, so yeah, it's right at 56. So, um, and the other one was the same, so that's good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the weight difference, which is two grams, and that's about four inches of lead tape, and place that at 12 o'clock and see if that'll bring the swing weight up to the uh, targeted weight, uh, swing weight at 307. So we'll start with that as our first uh, style here. So I have some scotch tape and I'll use the four inch length of lead tape. And we'll just go ahead and place it right at 12 o'clock at the top here. And right now, again, this is just a temporary uh, application until we know the exact weight and location. Well, we're doing it at the 12, so it's more the weight. Because really what I'm trying to get is the swing weight, even if it means that the weight might be a little bit off. So we'll see where this is at at four inches. All right, so we're at 305. So I wanna get it right at 307. So next I'm gonna take this off and go ahead and try uh, five inches. So I have a couple of pieces here already um, cut and I'm gonna go ahead and I have these in two halves so I'm just gonna put two two and a half pieces right from the center going down and It's right at 307, but I'll take a couple of readings just to make sure. I don't want to make sure the average of three uh, tests will come out to 307. All right, so that one is at 308. And I don't mind that it be, it's a one unit higher because sometimes when you take off the backing of the tape, it actually comes down a little bit. So, 
So yeah, uh, it's 307. So that's good. I'm going to go with that. So what I'm going to do is now take off this uh, temporary application, uh, use quarter inch lead tape and run it on the sides of the racket. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you what it looks like now. And you'll notice that at the very tip, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, at the very tip, you'll see that I left a gap because when I mount the racket on my machine, there's a, there's a uh, uh, post that goes right here. So I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna interfere with the lead tape. So I'll go ahead and set that up and uh, I'll come back to you. Actually, if you wanna watch me do it, uh, you can stay tuned and I'll do it right in front of you. If not, I'll go ahead and uh, provide a, uh, link where you can just go directly to the uh, finished product but so anyway I'm gonna cut uh, four two and a half pieces of lead tape because that's gonna go on uh, the sides of the um, on each side of the frame and it'll be up at 12 o'clock so I'm just using an awl to mark uh, the lead tape because basically I'm just gonna cut it where I'm making the mark and I don't necessarily need to use a pen for this. So, all right, so I've got those four pieces and cutting it right here. I'm gonna uh, also make sure that before I start, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the frame. So I have uh, isopropyl alcohol in my rag here. All right, so I'll go ahead and take this off. Now sometimes if this frame was a brand new frame, and let's say if, um, yeah, this was a brand new frame, for this application, since it's so little lead and it's red at 12 o'clock, I would actually take off the bumper guard and hide it under because uh, then that way, you know, the, the lead is uh, concealed. And typically players don't wear out their racket right at 12 o'clock. It's more like on the side, so I would actually hide it and do it that way. But again, this is the first time I'm uh, restringing this racket for this customer, so he's already used it, so I can't do that on a used racket. All right, so I'll go ahead and um, install those pieces. All right, I'm gonna actually use my wheel roller that um, if you've seen any of my previous videos that I used to flatten down the lead. So uh, what I'm gonna do is um, apply the lead tape but not push it down like really hard because sometimes uh, yeah I just want to double check it to make sure everything is good before I permanently uh, put it down on the frame within the beam of the racket so it's not touching the grommet the barrel uh, and of course not sticking past the uh, outer edge of the frame because basically I want to just make sure it's pretty much right down the middle within the beam. I find that if you put it next to the grommet, especially if it's a tie-off hole, then the, the grommet will flare out and then the, that'll start going into the lead tape. And when it gets dinged up, then it's just not very attractive looking. So I like to make sure that it's not gonna be anywhere close to where a, a grommet might start flaring out. You just want to make sure you're using the same reference hole uh, when you're running the lead tape down. Yeah, if you don't have quarter inch lead tape, you can always use half inch and cut it in half. And um, earlier I mentioned that I'm doing this with the gap in the middle so that it doesn't interfere with the, the machine when I'm mounting the racket. Uh, so you want to make sure that the type of machine that you use to string the racket, uh, while you're aware of it, because if I were to use my Neos 1000, then it has those two retainers that are uh, offset from the middle. So then I would make sure that I avoid those areas where it's going to touch the frame and just work around it. So the lead tape doesn't get smashed every time you have to restring the racket. Yeah, I can see one of these tie-off holes 
is where the lead tape is running right past it. So I'm making sure that it's not going to be touching that grommet. All right, so I'll bring this up, but I'll also provide a picture so you can see it. So the lead is uh, right there. Yeah, you can see it. It's not in the middle, but it's on both sides of the 12 o'clock area. So I'll go ahead and test it again to make sure that you know we're on target for that 307 swing weight. And I'll take uh, more than one reading so we can average it out. So that one came out to 306. That one came out at 305. Yeah, so this one's actually a little bit on the low side. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That one came out to 305 again. So I really want to make sure it comes out to 307. Uh, we'll take the weight just to make sure, well, we'll just to check where we're at at this point. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to put three inches, I think. I just want to make sure that if I'm going through all of this trouble, I want to make sure that it's exact. So yeah, it's at 348 right now. It's matching in weight, but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the same application, put three inches on each side, and uh, I'll come back to you at that point. All right, so what I did is I added three inches on each side of the uh, 12 o'clock area, running it from the center uh, down to each side. And um, I did the swing weight. And uh, it came out to 306, the average. So it didn't reach the 307. Uh, the swing weight came out to 349. So it increased it by, um, well, it's one gram heavier than the other one. So I'm going to stop there because I think that's really good um, in terms of getting it close. Uh, I wish it was at 307 though. But um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and um, use the wheel roller and use this to get the lead tape really to flatten down onto the surface of the frame. And what's really good about this is that you can really get a good leverage and just really get it down on there and you won't you don't have to rub it in with your thumb so that's always good when you don't have to uh, touch the tape the lead tape um, it can yeah, lessen the amount of lead tape that's uh, you're exposing yourself to lead tape <laughs> what i'm trying to say anyway i'm gonna just make sure you get that all down here all four sides all right so there's the finished finished product it looks like that um, and I'll provide a picture so you can see it better but um, all right so now what we're gonna do is um, I'll go ahead and uh, string it up and send it to him and I won't tell him, I'll see what he says first. And then, um, um, yeah, I'll let you know once um, he gets back to me. In case you're wondering why I didn't even talk about the balance of the racket, uh, it's because a swing weight, because a swing weight is a dynamic measurement of what the racket's doing when it's uh, being played. Well, it simulates what a racket would feel like when you're uh, playing. Uh, that, that's what the player's gonna feel more than the balance point. But uh, we'll go ahead and check it out just to see. Uh, I already took the uh, balance point of the uh, heavier racket, which was a 15 point headlight, which was uh, about 29.5 centimeters. And we'll go ahead and check out what this one came out at with the added weight. So it's probably gonna be a little bit less in terms of headlight. Um, so we'll bring it up here and it's coming in right at uh, right around 14 or about 29.7 centimeters. So uh, yeah, this one is a little bit head heavy. Between weight, swing weight, and balance point, the swing weight is the most important measurement because that'll determine the maneuverability and how it feels in the player's hand when they're swinging it. So. Uh, that's why if you have an RDC or any kind of swing weight machine, that's crucial in making sure that you customize your rackets according to how it's gonna feel in the player's hands. 
Look who sent me an email. It's from Emerson, my customer that I sent the rackets back to. He said, hi Al, I hit better with the lead tape and can control the ball. The unleaded tape feels more or less controlled. I like the lead weight and I can feel the ball better. Thanks again. Well, that wasn't the answer I was expecting. So I wrote back to him and I said, thanks for getting back to me so fast. Here's what I did. Although the weight difference between your two rackets was only two grams, the swing weight was nine units apart from each other, which can be noticeable to some players. I added three grams to your lighter racket to match the swing weight of your heavier racket. So it might be psychological since you can see the lead tape on that one frame, but now your two rackets should play identical to each other. At least that was the goal. Maybe now that you know this information, it might feel more similar the next time you hit. Well, there you have it. It is what it is. If you enjoyed this video and thought it was helpful, I did another video where I fully customized a player's racket to its specification by adding 21 grams to the head and the handle. This video is on the International Alliance of Racket Technicians website and will be featured on the July newsletter. If you'd like more information about IART, check out gssalliance.com. Thanks for watching. Happy customization and let your strings play.